Okay, so let's go to, uh, let's keep reading here. That way we can jump to Sardis. Verse 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. So if you overcome, remember that's a tribulation thing, right? So you're overcoming, you're conquering. And keepeth my works unto the end. That really sounds like tribulation. See, doing works all the way to the end for your salvation. To him will I give power over the nations. So the tribulation saint will have power to rule over nations if they overcome and keep works to the end. So the two passages, I'm going to turn to there quickly. So if you want to turn there, you can turn there. Matthew 24, 13. Matthew 24, 13. And the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Chapter 4. Hebrews 4. So Hebrews 4 and Matthew 24. But I'm going to go ahead and just read it. So you just listen up or you can write it down, okay? Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the context of that was what? Tribulation. It's a tribulation timeline. If you look at verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. So at the tribulation time period, their salvation is working to the end. Hebrews chapter 4, notice right here, there is this thing concerning about works. Verse 10, Hebrews 4.10, For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into rest. See, laboring, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So notice right here that this faith requires a works all the way to the end. A lot of people wrongly apply this to Christians today, thinking that true Christian faith will have works all the way to the end to prove you're saved. No, there are plenty of verses I can show you in the Bible where people's faith in their work life was pretty poor, and they can even die pretty poor in their works, and they're still saved Christians. But then why would this verse show genuinely saved by faith people having works to the end? Because Hebrews, it says, what's the passage? What's the title of your book? Hebrews. This is for God's program with Israel, not with the Christian church. It's Israel. Not only that, if you look at Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, the time period is tribulation. What God is speaking in this whole book is speaking in these last days. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. Matthew 24, it said the tribulation, their salvation is by working to the end. Why is their salvation different from us, pastor? Very simple. Because you have to resist persecution from the Antichrist in hell by not taking the mark of the beast, and you got to be willing to die for Jesus Christ. Now, how many Christians have denied the name of Jesus without going through persecution today? in their Christian walk. Can any of you be willing to be tortured for the name of Jesus Christ, burnt at the stake without denying him? If you deny him, you're considered lost at the tribulation. So obviously this doesn't apply to us today, otherwise no one is saved pretty much in here. Because I don't think you've made a dedication to God on the altar yet. Lord, I'm willing to be tortured for your name's sake. I don't know if any of you did that dedication yet. <laughs> so if you didn't, then that means you're not saved. <laughs> According to this passage, these passages, because you have to work to the end by resisting the torture, persecution of the Antichrist system. Okay, so let's return to our main text of Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. So if they endure to the end, then what? They're going to have power over the nations. They're going to rule. Verse 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So they're going to be able to rule with what? A rod of iron. So it's a metaphorical phrase, meaning like strong dictatorship, military dictatorship. You're going to have that kind of strong rule. As the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken to shivers. So meaning that just like a pottery that you see, a vessel, it, you're going to crash it to pieces with that rod of iron. That's how the people are under your rule. They're going to be, be broken to shivers underneath your rod of iron. Even as I received of my father. So Jesus says, that's going to be my rule from my father. Now, obviously, we don't see that during this timeline. This whole timeline is the church age, which is the age of grace. 
It's the age of grace. In dispensationalism, today's timeline is called age of grace or church age. Tribulation is known as wrath, as we looked at the verse many times, or the Lord's day. And then the end of the tribulation is what? Millennium, God's kingdom. That's where he rules over the kingdoms of the earth. And guess what? When he rules over, the, over this earth, he, he's done with grace and mercy. He's given them 2,000 years right. of that. At least let him have 1,000 years doing what he wants to do, huh? Yeah. So 1,000 years, he's going to do whatever he wants to do. Why? Because he has the right to do so. All right? Everyone takes his name in vain and then, you know, bail out on God and then, you know, let him down and then they sin against God. I think God had enough of that. So let him do whatever he wants for a thousand years, huh? Right. Give him a break. So God, he's going to hit you with that rod of iron if you misbehave. Bam! Like that. You're going to be broken to pieces. But here's something interesting. These tribulation saints are going to be joining him in that same kind of rule. If you look at Revelation chapter 20, we're not going to turn there, but it says that these tribulation saints who are beheaded by the Antichrist, they join Jesus' reign. So Jesus' reign, which is a rod of iron, they're going to be joining him. And guess who reigns with Jesus Christ when you read Romans chapter 8? Saved Christians as well. So saved Christians, when you rule over the cities of this earth, guess what? They're going to have to follow anything you say. Why? Because it's done out of military dictatorship. Oh, democracy. What happened to democracy? Yeah, I'll tell you what happened to democracy. Laodicea, rights of the people, right? Democracy. This is your mess today. This is democracy. You happy? We're all such happy people, aren't we? But if we do it under the will and the whim of everything holy, nothing can go wrong and nothing is unfair. Amen. See? If, every, if you rule the way you want to do at the millennium while having a holy mind like Jesus Christ, nothing can go wrong and nothing is unfair. It's going to be a perfect paradise. The only reason why it will be military and unfair to lost sinners is because they don't have a holy mind. That's why they think it's unfair. In their unholy, unclean mind, it's intolerant. It's bigoted. It's narrow-minded. It's... You know, uh, what, it's a fundamental extreme religion. You think you're right, everybody's wrong. And guess what? Jesus is going to say, that's right, I'm right, you're all wrong. Bam! He's going to hit them with that rod of iron. All right, verse 28. And I will give him the morning star. Ah, the morning star is Jesus Christ. Look at Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Verse 16, Revelation twenty two sixteen. 16. Oh, by the way, if you have an NIV, if you have an ESV, if you have an NASV, you're going to notice that Isaiah chapter 14, Lucifer, who's speaking, they give him the title Morning Star. They give Jesus' title Morning Star to Lucifer. If you look at NASV, ESV, and NIV. All right, let's look at Revelation twenty two sixteen. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the what? Bright and morning star. So Jesus is the morning star. Now, notice, remember the context of Revelation 2? If they overcome, right? If they overcome, then what? They're going to rule with Jesus, and they're also going to receive the morning star as well. Ah, then that means that Jesus Christ can only be with them depending upon what? Their works at verse 26. That shows the salvation in the tribulation is different from us. Because no matter how many times we let Jesus down, the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we, ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, no matter how many times you grieve or let Jesus, da Jesus down, God is still inside you. But these people at Revelation 22, they have to keep the work to the end if they're going to retain Jesus within them. Why? Because Jesus is not going to be within a saint who caves into the mark of the beast system. You betcha the Holy Spirit's going to leave that person. Okay, so let's look at verse 29. He that hath an ear... Okay, you, hear me, you heard me say this several times. You all got ears? All right, if you all got ears, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Hear what the Holy Spirit is talking to you churches. 
we went through Revelation 2, and we're about to start at 3. I hope you churches have already paid attention and learned enough. But guess what? One ear, out the other. I wonder if you forgot already the last studies on Revelation, what you can apply to yourself and lessons you can learn, right?